Dear diary, there's something so sweet and special about growing your own food and seeing the whole process being done and then being able to can it and then feed it to your family. I thank you, Lord, for your provision. I thank you, Lord, for our land. homestead it's very noisy in here Nathaniel's doing work in the basement if you don't know what's going on make sure you check out our video of homestead house problems I'll link it in the description I'm gonna try to talk over all the banging today is actually one of my favorite days it's such a peaceful thing that I love to do and that is to make sauce so we planted 120 tomato plants here we got lots of beautiful tomatoes from it. We did the Roma tomatoes. Uh, next year we're hoping to do a combination of the Amish paste and the Romas. So thank you for joining us today. We are a homestead channel where we share our life with you and hope that you will be able to apply something to your own life to have a more simple way of life. So last night I put these in the sink really tired it's 10 39 at night uh we froze our tomatoes i was gonna say i don't know what i was gonna say tomatoes we froze our tomatoes so that uh we can sauce all at one time but you have to make sure that you defrost them so we're gonna put them in so they'll, they'll be ready in the morning jeez <laughs> Making sure that they are defrosting, which they are. What are they doing? Oh, which one was the hat? That's the one that's against this wall. Oh. So they, made, they actually made this one the shitter block. Lots of water came into our basement. Um, there was a whole big issue and we figured it out and fixed it. So make sure you check out that other video it's, that I was telling you about. It stinks. Yeah, it smells like, like water. Our plan today is to start outside in a really big pot and then move inside once it has cooked down to a sauce because we just have way too many tomatoes to have on our stove and we wanna do it all at one time. So, my daddy is gonna come and he's gonna help me get started outside. When we're out there, I'll give you a little bit of family history and why he's the one to help me. And with your family. You can block it or anything. The mail for everything. You guys want to? I did. It works real good. You bet he got six tomatoes. All right, let's. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we put all of the tomatoes in the big pot here. This pot is super special to us because was it your parents used it for how many years you think? A lot of years. A lot, a lot of years. He canned tomato, or tomato sauce all growing up. This is my daddy. <laughs> yep. And so he's the professional behind this business. Um, and so I'm gonna ask him a couple questions about our family, which he's super excited about. So what we're doing is you're gonna take, so earlier I told you about our frozen tomatoes. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna put them in your pot. This is just to get the skins to slip. Um, so to get. I can't really stir them good because I don't have a good paddle. You don't want it too high because you don't want it to burn. Especially when you can't get to the bottom to stir it good. But it's just, I feel it's easier once it's hot mm -hmm. and uh, skin slips easier. 
Now this is a, an aluminum pot, so we want minimal, you know, contact time with the acidic tomatoes. Because what can the aluminum pot do? Well, it just leaches out, reacts with the acid. But all we're doing is we're not going to keep it in there that long. We're just getting it heated enough to process it, and then we will turn it over to our stainless steel pots and cook it the rest of the time on the stove. Even though growing up, this is all we had. Right. So we did everything in the aluminum. We even cooked it for hours and hours in the aluminum. And his parents are 95. It's not working out too bad, this paddle. Yeah, once you got through the... Typically, the, what we use, it looked like almost like a boat or a grandfather had made out of wood. The brother Tony has. All right, so since we're letting that heat up just a tiny bit, let me ask you a few questions. So where were, where was Grandpops, your father's parents from? Messina, Sicily. Okay, and where was your grandmother, I mean your mother, where was your mother's parents your from? Your grandmother's parents? Yes, my grandmother's parents. Uh, Palermo. What is it? Palermo, I believe. Okay. Sicily. So every year, the only vacation my daddy ever took was to go to New Jersey and they would go to... It was a farm my uncles knew, farmers that you pay, you know, a couple dollars. Back then it was like two dollars for a five-eighths of a bushel basket for tomatoes. I can remember getting like maybe 30 baskets or so. And so what was your job in the process? Well, starting out, I would uh, clean the tomatoes. We would cut them. We would dump them in a wash, a large wash tub. Um, you know, a basket or two, a couple baskets at a time, and then um, decor them, cut out any bad spots, quarter them up, put them back in, uh, in in clean baskets. As we do that, sometimes we would layer it with salt, salt, and just kind of put pressure on it, press them, to get any uh, juices out. Just some excess liquid would drain out. Early, when I was real young. Before we had gas burners, we would we had a steel steel plate, thick steel plate uh, on top of a uh, concrete block, and we would build a fire under it. That was part of my job was to go get sticks and kindling, you know, keep the feed in the fire. As I got older, one of my uncles made a, a burner out of an old hot water heater, gas hot water heater. We, we would cook on that. Should we add the other bags now? Yes, yeah, what I was thinking. <laughs> Mommy, All right, so how long has this been now? Um, not that long. Yeah, it hasn't been long at all. Well, it's, it's 30 minutes? Maybe. So we got our little processing station here, which is a short piece of a two by four screwed down on this deck board and then we have this what is this thing called this is the box oh boy right here food strainer sauce maker see that see that we've used it we've used it to make applesauce and sauce in the past so what it's going to do is it's going to separate your skins and your seeds and your bad spots i suppose um all into one pot and then all of the good stuff that you're gonna cook down and make sauce into the other side. And the junky stuff's coming out here. Which you can take this and you can dehydrate it and make it into powder and use it for flavoring if you Where's the want to. I probably, you know what I probably did? I probably threw it in the wrong pile. Mm -hmm. Don't do it again. <laughs> so that process is done, except we had a problem multiple times with it jamming. We have no idea why, because we've never had that problem before. See how, yeah. Oh. Jam pack. Oh, it's yeah. bubbling. It's been on the stove of about an hour, I think. Well, this one about 30 minutes. You can see the difference. This has been on the stove for about an hour. It's the next morning and I wanted to show you what the sauce looks like. We had it cook for 
We had it cook for six hours yesterday and this is what it did. So you can see after, <laughs> so you can see after it set all night, the water rises to the surface. So then what you're gonna do is you're gonna scoop off the water and then cook it some more until it's the consistency that you want, as thick as you want. <coughs> so you're just gonna ladle the water off. Make sure when you're cooking your sauce that you leave the lids off so the water can steam away. So this is the water that we got off of it, but you can see it does have some tomato in it. So I will actually save this um, I'll probably just freeze it and then I'll use it as a nice base to a warm winter soup. So you can see here the nice thickness after six hours yesterday. So I'm gonna start it now. Here's the other one. Let me get that stirred up for you so you can see. So this pot had a lot more in it, so it'll need a little bit longer to cook. I'll let you know the final time. I took this pot and combined it with this pot. And this is how much we have. This is just some bread rising over here. Opal's playing the drums. <laughs> Good job. Okay, this is just a side note. Um, we got these big cans of sauce. It was $4.50 for this, which is cheaper than buying the individual jars. So you can buy big things like this and even bigger and you can heat it up and can it yourself in the same way we're doing or you can go to a farmer's market and buy a whole bunch of tomatoes if you're not able to grow them so there's other ways to can your own So I'm out here. I'm just gonna talk to you guys real quick. Actually, I'm gonna set you up right here. <laughs> okay. So just a recap of everything. You're gonna plant your seeds. Um, we have videos explaining like how we planted our tomatoes, but majority of them we planted from seed. We so in saying that after you harvest your tomatoes, if you don't have a big farm and you don't harvest them all at one time, it's okay. You just have to freeze them. So you're gonna want to uh, cut off the tops of the tomatoes, have them if you want, cut out any bad spots. I like to have them, you don't have to. You can put them in whole. I like to have them because sometimes they look really nice on the outside, but they're actually not. Kind of like moldy on the inside. And so you just wanna make sure you get all of that out. Uh, your Roma tomato, tomatoes and your Amish paste tomatoes are going to be your meatier tomatoes. You can make sauce out of any tomatoes. You're going to have to cook it down even longer. So you want a meatier tomato so that it's more sauce. From frozen, you're going to want to take your tomatoes, you're going to want to put them in your sink for that night so that they defrost enough because you do not want to put big blocks of tomatoes into your pot because you're not gonna be able to stir it properly and if you get stir it properly, it can burn. So you don't wanna do that. Then you are going to, so we did that for three hours and then we put it through our strainer, our food strainer to get to separate the skins from the meat. You don't have to have one. You can manually do that. It's just gonna take a little bit more time. And some people leave the seeds in, but you can just, you can slip off the skins. 1870s Homestead on YouTube, they actually take it, um, after it's defrosted that night, they take it the next morning and they just slip the skins off by hand. But we had a lot of tomatoes for that, so we put it through the, the food strainer. So we did that, then it cooked on our stove in the stainless steel pots, 130 quart pot, 120 quart pot, for six hours. So the first day was six plus three, was nine hours of cooking. The second day we did another five hours of cooking all night have you ever had an Italian dish where the next day the sauce mm, just tasted delicious? Well, that's um, it's just something about cooling down and then reheating. 
So I already did that process, so it should be even, mm, have even more of that like tomato sauce bite. And then in the morning, I took it back up to hot, hot, hot for about five hours. Uh, before I turned the burner on the next morning, the water settles on the top, so I scooped it all off. Um, and then so when I scooped it off, then I was um, able to stir it up. I took that sauce, that uh, water, that water saucy. I froze it for like a soup base so nothing goes to waste. Uh, I don't know if you heard me earlier. You can even take the skins from the seeds part that comes out of the strainer and you can even put it in your dehydrator, turn it into a powder and use it for actual uh, seasoning and stuff. I let it cook down for another five hours. Then as it's boiling bubbly hot, you're gonna take your jars and you're gonna make sure to just double check that they're sanitized and also let's just to warm them up a bit. Put your stove on its uh, coolest setting, minus 170. I let them go in there and just get real, kind of like hot to the touch. I pull them out, I strain the sauce into it. I add a teaspoon of salt and a little bit of basil on top from our basil herbs. And then I, I do the seal and the ring and then you set it under a towel to keep that heat in there and it will create a vacuum and it will seal as it cools down, which is super cool. And because of the acidity in the tomatoes, you don't have to water bath or pressure can. At least we don't, you do what you feel comfortable with. That's the way we've always done it and it works perfect. Um, and then when I actually cook the sauce, I add three tablespoons of Italian seasoning. I'll write in the description what exactly is in my Italian seasoning. And then I do a little bit more salt to taste and I just keep cooking it down. And because homemade tomato sauce is thinner, it's just the way it is. If you want it thicker, you can add some tomato paste that you've made or that you've gotten from the store. And so that really is it in a tiny little nutshell. Well, Thank you guys so much for joining us today. Comment below with your favorite thing that you like to can, or if you've never can, what you would love to try. And thanks for watching, you guys. God bless.